uh, hello and welcome to International Mediterranean Conference. And I would like to invite you to listen to the presentation on contradictions of uh, Albert Camus. Um, Albert Camus is, uh, how can I move this, sorry? Oh, sorry. Uh, Albert Camus is uh, actually a Mediterranean figure in reality uh, because uh, he uh, connects to uh, countries of uh, Algeria and French, France together. And he is originally a French character and he uh, is from uh, France originally, but he was born in Algeria in 1913 and he died in 1916 in a car accident just two years before Algeria's uh, independence. Um, he is a philosopher, author and also a journalist and uh, his uh, philosophical thoughts, even his political thoughts all together are really important and till now still receives controversial reactions and also uh, 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 criticism, even till now. Uh, and on the other hand, he is a Nobel Prize winner in uh, 1957. He is still among the youngest uh, people who won the Nobel Prize at age 44. So um, he was born to a Pinot family. Pinot are actually translated as black feet, which means that uh, referring to the uh, black boots of the French soldiers when they occupied Algeria. But actually the class, social class of these people were uh, very uh, low level. They were poor and even in Algeria they were living in a poor neighborhood. So uh, in many uh, of his works he mentioned that and insisted that, uh, that I am from Algeria and I am a person who is from Algeria, my homeland is Algeria. So he really cared and he really, he, re he was really concerned about issues and anything, any political issues, anything happening in Algeria. So we just want to see his contradictions that um, from different perspective, but I mostly focus on his colonial uh, uh, contradictions. From the political point of view, uh, some of the critics call him a colonialist, but on the other hand, some support him as an anti-colonial. And from philosophical point of view, he is having some um, 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 actually notions of absurdism and absurdity of life. And, but on the other hand, he is also searching for the meaning of life. So we can see these kinds of uh, contradiction and in the literature and the literary works uh, by Albert Camus, also we can see the reflection of his philosophical and political, political thoughts as well. So um, if you want to see his political activities, we have to just uh, um, see, uh, see it from the time of colonialism. Actually, colonialism started in Algeria in 1830, and it was about 132 years of uh, um, colonization in Algeria, which is one of the longest period of colonization in the history. And uh, in 1881, there was a, a, a series of racist laws passed in there, which was called the Indig Indigenous Code, which was a very discriminative uh, sets of laws and actually degrading the inhabitants and the indigenous people of Algeria and also on the other hand they really deprived the Algerian from uh, uh, from the 
um, very um, important political activities and events like elections or they had no right to work inside the official government and this thing. So they were mostly pushed aside. They were marginalized and actually the dominant figures and the dominant power was in the hands of the French people. So uh, Camus was in fact asking for minor reforms in order to reform these, uh, uh, these laws in order to decrease the gaps between the, uh, uh, between the inhabitants or the Algerians and the uh, French uh, inhabitants in Algeria. So he joined the French Communist Party and he saw it as a way to fight inequalities between European and natives in Algeria. And also he was a member of Algerian People's Party, which was a a uh, moderate anti-colonialist and national, nationalist party. And toward the end of World War II, he became active in intellectual resistance to the German occupation of France. So uh, here we can see that he has humanitarian view and uh, he really cared about the oppressed people. He was looking for equality, he was looking for justice and uh, he really cared about this issue because he knew that uh, as long as this gap between the, be between the Algerians and the French are very wide, there could be some riots, some chaos that happen and uh, it would be really hard to control the country. So his uh, political thoughts, he wanted to actually speak his political thoughts in some media. So he started to work in the Algeria Republican uh, uh, newspaper and he started to work there, work there in 1938. And uh, he began working for the leftist newspaper uh, and uh, he had developed strong feelings against uh, authoritative colonialism as he witnessed the harsh treatment of the Arabs and Berbers by uh, French authorities. Um, and as a result of his articles, he really uh, hoped to see a growing awareness uh, uh, among, the, uh, among the authorities and some reforms to happen. But unfortunately, nothing happened. The colonial authorities banned the newspaper and uh, um, Camus left uh, Algeria to France. And uh, it, as a journalist, he tried to influence the public opinion of the inhabitants. And also he had a series of articles based on his travels to Kabalia. Uh, Kabalia is a region in Algeria which was in a very poor condition. People were deprived of very primitive things and primary rights to live, like food, like cloth. So he was describing and depicting the, 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 the appearance of people who were living in Kabalia. And he said that the, the people were searching for food in the trashes. They were wearing rags and not a cloth. So uh, he was thinking that uh, he and the uh, actually other French uh, uh, who are living in Algeria are responsible for this poverty. On the one hand, some critics says that if you want to see it in surface level, he is very humanitarian and he wanted to um, actually take good action and steps to help the poor. But on the other hand, if we just look at in deep, why doesn't he speak about the rights of the Algerian as the main owner of Algeria, of, the, of their motherland? So, uh, um, this was um, different, actually, reactions toward uh, his political views. And the, in this article, Camus described in great detail the abject living condition in Kabbalia without, however, explaining that the negligence of the French state was punitive and deliberate because the Kabbalia had mounted the fiercest resistance to the occupier. And from the philosophical point of view, um, uh, on the other hand, Camus focused most of his philosophy around existentialist question. Although he, uh, in the different occasion, he denies that I am not an existentialist, but 
all his question which he is asking is about the meaning of life. The absurdity of life, the inevitable ending is highlighted in his acts. And according to him, there were two absurd things. The first observation was that, was that neither life nor death has no meaning. And the second was the limitation, that the human being is incapable to find the meaning to life because of his limitation. And more importantly, Camus addressed one of the fundamental questions of existentialism, which is the problem of suicide. So if there is no meaning to life, and if the life is absurd, so what is the answer to it? He says that there is only one really serious philosophical question, and that is suicide. And Camus views the question of suicide as arising naturally as a solution to the absurdity of life. All of these uh, philosophical and political views are reflected in his very famous novels. He is so great that also, beside his philosophical and political views, his um, style of writing was so attractive that it got a large audience around the world. Many of his novels was um, translated to different languages, among them Stranger and Plague, and also the myth of Sisyphus and the rebel and etc. are very, very famous works by uh, Albert Camus. So in A Stranger also, Camus gives an example of a person who is a French Algerian, his name is Morceau, uh, Morceau and he uh, gives the example of absurdism and also existentialism. And he calls Morceau as a man of Mediterranean who badly practices traditional Mediterranean culture. So, at the first of the novel, he is very indifferent toward his mother's death. He shows the indifference, uh, in, in, indifference of the character toward his mother's death. And also, after two days, by no means he kills an Arab. Uh, and um, this all shows the absurdity and meaninglessness of the person who is encountering the life. So, um, we can see some contradictions in depicting the, the, the characters in his novels, that later he also uh, mentions this, that there is some paradoxical feeling in the characters that he depicts in his novel. The other one is Plague. And it's very interesting to know that nowadays Plague also became so popular um, and many audience, uh, they, write, they like to read Plague and uh, they, uh, they were very interested to know that what is happening in this novel because it is about the contagious disease which happened uh, in time in m many years ago. So uh, uh, depicting the, the society which are trapped in a, a disease like Plague and people were killed and actually died and they uh, have to stay in quarantine. So he is showing the powerlessness of the individual to affect their destinies. So uh, uh, in response to, uh, he, uh, to a question that how does he feel about the novel of The Stranger, he says that I summarized The Stranger a long time ago with a remark I admit was highly paradoxical. In our society, any man who does not weep at his mother's funeral runs the risk of being sentenced to death. I only meant that the hero of my book is condemned because he does not play the game. Okay, uh, but all the controversial issues uh, toward Albert Camus starts to appear in time of Algerian war, which Algeria was, was, was fighting for independence. So it goes to the time of 1954 to 1962. In that time, Camus was silent and he had a neutral uh, uh, stance. And he doesn't want to support the left party nor the right party. party. He was always, always asking for civil ceasefire, but nobody accepted. So Camus traveled to Algeria to negotiate a truce between the two belliger belligerents, but was met with distrust by all parties. Uh, and in uh, one uh, famous, uh, in, in, his, in the time which he was actually uh, in a speech of uh, receiving his Nobel Prize, uh, one of the Algerian students 
ask about his uh, actually uh, how how the, how does he uh, express his feeling toward the Algeria's wall? He says that people are now planting bombs in the tramways of Algeria, and my mother might be on one of those tramways. If this is justice, then I prefer my mother. So Camus critics have uh, labeled the response as uh, reactionary and as a result of a colonialist uh, attitude. So, um, actually, uh, he, he, he wrote different articles and pu uh, published it in papers, and he says that I cannot believe that everything must be subordinated to a single end. There are means, means that cannot be e uh, excused, and I should like to be able to love my country and still love justice. I don't want just any greatness for it particularly a greatness full of blood and falsehood. I want to keep it alive by keeping justice alive. So uh, what Camus is mostly focusing on is justice, ceasefire. He doesn't want the Algeria to be independent. He wanted to be under a much, actually a superpower of, of France in order to um, actually have uh, the development but uh, he cannot also support the Algerians that they really want their own homeland. On the other hand, Camus also feels that Algeria is his homeland, but uh, from both parties he is rejected. The French called Camus as a traitor because they, he doesn't support the colonialist power of France. And the other hand, the Algerians, they don't like Camus because he never speaks about the Algeria's independence. But eventually, before the independence of Algeria, he dies in uh, the car accidents. So um, if I want to come to conclusion, I can say that um, Camus is speaking about a new Mediterranean culture and a new Mediterranean identity. Why? Because he wants to mostly uh, uh, insist on, on multi-ethnicity, multiculturalism, not on focusing on Algerian identity or French identity, because he saw all of the, all of the discrimination. So he wanted to reach to a unity and to reach to a multiculturalism that m paves the way and makes the situation in a peaceful condition that everyone can have a part in the society. But this uh, idea never, uh, was never acknowledged by both the, of the parties. So even today, uh, I can say, Alge uh, um, Kamu is uh, uh, a, a stranger in Algeria. He's boycotted in Algeria because um, uh, the Algerians are considering Camus as a co colonialist. Although he is a very great literary figure and philosophical figure, and Algeria can appreciate him as a heritage, uh, a heritage as a cultural heritage or literary heritage, by then, but he never, uh, they never accepted it. And even, uh, it's very interesting that when I ask my friends from Algeria that, do you know Albert Camus? They said, no, we have no idea of Albert Camus. Although uh, many people around the world, they, they know Algeria by the works of Albert Camus. And this is really strange that still uh, Camus is, uh, is uh, actually reacted with these contradictions and also with these controversial, controversial issues. Uh, so this was uh, the conclusion, and thanks for listening. Uh,